Hello and welcome to Space Engineers. I am the Storm 4 2012 and this is my asteroid base that I've been building for uh, several weeks now, three and a half, four, something like that. Uh, it was built all in survival um, and I built it as a survival base slash 3D printer which I have the 3D printer over here in this room. There's my 3D printer. Uh, I'm using automatic configurable LCD mod from the Steam Workshop. This shows what ingots and ores and components and everything that I have. Uh, backup reactors right there. This shows my electrics, uh, the reactors and the solars and how much I'm outputting. Uh, oxygen pressurization in both this room, which is the main base, and that room back there, which is hangar, uh, plus my oxygen farm efficiency and how much I have in my oxygen tanks. Uh, it's also multiplayer ready. There's six cryopods here for up to six people to play. This timer block and programmable block run the uh, LCDs. The med bay here is piped in with oxygen um, so it can be used to refill both air or both energy and oxygen and then if we just come right here through this room and close that door I have my air pressure controls right here next to that that's the hangar door that opens up the hangar back there and then this turns the vents into or to depressurize modes. It actually turns both of them over, but this right here is my depressurization tank because I have this one tank that's mostly empty just to depressurize. Um, this small cargo container right here uh, connects directly into uh, the conveyor system. This is where you can, you, if you mess up on this, you can drop everything in here. Hmm. Um, so to get this started, we come down here and load in a blueprint into our projector and I'm using um, the Henry Mark 1 from uh, Aaron 74 of Last Stand Gamers because it's a very easy ship to build um, and he's you know his 3D printer and his survival is the one that gave me the idea to build this one I really liked it and I wanted you know I wanted to see what it would like to be to run one of my own and then see the Henry fits in there real nicely uh, this vertical bit here can be adjusted forward or backwards to fit your particular ship um, and then once you get your ship set up you press pistons left and pistons right and that'll push the pistons out are you actually gonna work this time hmm. I don't know why this piston doesn't work. Um, I might have to tear it out and redo it, but since I'm not I'm not too worried about it, since the ship does not come up this far, um, just kind of there for a bigger ship. Um, I actually built this. This is the fourth iteration of this particular setup that I've had. Uh, most of the other ones failed miserably somewhere in the middle. So I had to tear them all out and redo them. Um, let's see how far... Okay, we're depressurized now, so I can open that. I have the hangers also set up right here. Um, after the ship is built, if you uh, cut it loose before putting any plutonium or uranium in it to power the reactors, things tend to float backwards toward the hangar doors kind of up and to the right. I don't know why things just tend to do that in here. Okay, so once the uh, welders there are in position, you click that one for turn the welders on. Give it a couple of seconds to, you know, get the initial build going. Uh, as soon as the sparks die out, you can press that one and press that one. And that starts the uh, pistons pulling back. Uh, I have a lot of lag on this particular system because I'm only running it uh, off of a uh, NVIDIA's GTX 650 Ti. 
So I'm running. I'm also running indirect X11. So uh, I got a lot of lag from this system. Uh, the pistons are running at 0 0.1 meters per second right at the moment, but that can be adjusted. Things t tend to go haywire if you go above 0.6 meters per second. Uh, either things don't get printed properly or the pistons tend to vibrate a lot, which vibrates all of this, which causes all sorts of uh, you know crazy things to start happening down there. From the looks of things, I don't think... Uh, I might have missed one of the torpedo launchers down there. Hmm. Oh, no, just a reflection from my helmet, or from my helmet lights. I tried getting enough spotlights in here to light uh, to brighten this place up a lot, but eh, with the DirectX 11 lighting, it doesn't really want to work that well. And let's see, the ship looks like it's almost... Yeah, I just got a little bit left on the, on the nacelles there. Okay, that side looks finished. That side looks finished. And I still got that little piece right there. Anyway. So, once it's finished printing, press T to turn off the welders. And there you go. Fully printed ship. And whatever that little piece right there is. I don't know where that actually goes. Uh, and a surprise piece. Uh, you come here, press K. And just about everything on here, as long as it doesn't say incomplete, the printer did it all. Uh, I crouched instead of jetpacked. Uh, you can drop some uranium in it, depending on you know where your particular inputs are. Uh, drop some uranium in it, cut off whichever block is connecting connected to your ship, and fly it right out of the hangar. I've got a convenient little landing pad for it right out here right off the front and then underneath here is where I have my conveyor and refinery and assembler complex um, my oxygen farms are over there uh, solars are over here this is one of the three mods that I have on here and these are 5x, 6x, 5x solar panels so each solar panel is the equivalent of five normal solar panels. Um, I chose that mod because they're very good, very efficient. Also, inside this asteroid, there's a ship buried in there, or I say buried, it's parked. That's um, a mining ship, and it has a 6x, uh, or it's, it's a better ore detector. I think it's five or 6x ore detector. Also, there's a grinding ship and a welding ship in somewhere... Uh, I want to say straight back that way, but in that general vicinity. Uh, the way I have this set up is this is your drop-off point for everything. You drop ores, components, whatever, right into here. And ores are taken this way and split between the arc furnace and the refineries. Um, I don't know if it necessarily does it automatically or if it just fills in as need be, but... There's six arc furnaces and four refineries. Uh, yeah, four refineries. I don't think I double stacked those. No, four refineries. Um, and then both of those, as they make ingots, filter into either this small... Oops, crashing. Uh, this small cargo container here, or these two large ones, depending on that one's capacity. And then all of the ingots... Uh, also, the oxygen farm feeds into the conveyor system right there. All of the ingots are then fed through this 3x5 collection of assemblers. For There's 15 assemblers, all in cooperative mode. And then they all pull out through there. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and we'll see you out there.